do you know how to reach the places you usually go to? Or do you use an app to get to them? Do you remember your friend's phone number? Or do you have it saved in your phone? And how do you make calculations? Do you use a calculator? Little by little, we have outsourced parts of our brain to technology. The volume of information in the modern world has affected us much more than we can imagine. Research reveals that digital technology not only interferes with the way we communicate, but it also deeply affects the human brain. Having lost control, the majority of people have lost the ability to focus on a single subject. Their thoughts are constantly getting shallower and more chaotic, and their reasoning is rushed. Even more so, the human being is handing over the control of their thoughts to the superficial pace of this world, thus becoming a hostage of the anxiety that draws them away from what matters the most. It's only by drawing close to the fountain of life that one can restore the correct way of thinking. In order to do this, it's necessary to elevate one's thoughts to the Creator, according to the guidance given by Him to Moses thousands of years ago. Come up to me on the mountain and be there. The life of stability that you're looking for requires a different pace a pace that this world is trying to eliminate. This return has to be a conscious personal effort to conquer what is most precious that will sustain you on your journey. The Holy Spirit. Going up to the mountain is to walk away from the vast and shallow plains of this world. It's to align your thoughts to God's thoughts. It's to go up to His level and allow Him, not the world, to shape who you are, define how you will live and who you will become. Hello, a very good evening to all of you and wherever you may be right now, may God bless you. We know we have people who connect to this program from work, from home, in their commute, from work to home, wherever you are, may the presence of the living God be, be with you right now. We have been speaking about the prayer that Moses said to God, a bold prayer that said, if your presence doesn't go with us, then we don't want to leave this place here. But the interesting thing is the answer that God gave to Moses. You will see here tonight how God dealt with that request that Moses said and what that means to us today. Because God has a plan. There is something that he wants to do. But in order for him to do that, we have to position ourselves in this plan of God. We're going to watch now a very powerful testimony. Someone who wanted to help people, spiritually wanted to help people, but he did that in a completely wrong way. But after he received the Spirit of God, he was then able to help people in the right way. You'll see his story now and exactly what we are talking about. And by the way, we have the pastors connected from across the UK. I'm here uh, in in Luton with Pastor Raymar. He's here with us. We were here in the evening service. It was a blessing, the tour of faith and miracles. We have the Pastor Miguel and the pastors there in on the altar of Finsbury Park. You can see them there on your screen. And also the pastors connected on all the altars, the Mount Sinai's across the UK. Let's watch this testimony. We'll come back in just a moment. Magic Master. 
trainer of 200 spirit mediums, 100 head spiritualists, and 1,000 wizards. I loved spirits. Though I had a degree in mechanical engineering, with a master's degree from France, I became interested in that world. I started out by visiting these places and then began to perfect myself. First, I started out as an apprentice. Then I became a magic master. I took courses in different parts of the country to learn more about the world of magic, the world of spirits. I then progressed to open my own school of magic. It started with 20, 30 people. In the end, there were more than 100 people at the school. It was a huge group. For many years, I graduated and initiated people. There were many wizards, spirit mediums. I also came to the point of graduating head spiritualists. I had always tried to help people. In that environment, there are many good people with a good heart who really want to serve, to help others. Unfortunately, there is deceit too. I question myself a lot as a result. Why do I make a person feel well, but after some time, they feel bad again? I question myself about that a lot. They were healed. But six months later, they returned with another sickness or even feeling even worse than before. This was something that I asked myself many times. Why do things not improve? However, I still carried on because that was my all. It was my world. I lived 24-7 for the spirits. How did it work? I heard, I saw, I felt. Sometimes I would wake up in the middle of the night with a spirit calling me to carry out a work, to go to a force field, go to the cemetery, go to the waterfall. Regardless of the time, I would go and carry out the work. This was the life. I was a waiter for the spirits. I called the chief spirit father, and he was with me all the time. I was a nervous person, agitated. The spirits bothered me all the time. I had visions, shadows. I even saw the devil himself in front of me. Until 2016, I was a purchasing department coordinator for a multinational company, and I lost that job. So let's say that this was the first blow I received and my financial condition got tight. Until then, I had a stable financial condition, but then things started to get financially more difficult. I had a degree in mechanical engineering in a renowned university with a master's degree from France, but I couldn't find a job. I even tried to open a company in the construction business, providing consultancy, but this did not take off and things did not improve. However, that was not my rock bottom. A year later, I was betrayed by my then wife, that was the real blow, the rock bottom for me. Why? Because my family was my everything. When it affected my financial life, my professional life, and then my family, it was a huge blow. Nonetheless, I still didn't let go of that world. I thought that the spirits would help me, that they would do something to change things for me. No, months passed and nothing happened. I implored them, help me. But things did not improve. How did I feel? That shook my faith even more. Because imagine, I do good, I help people, but I cannot help myself. One day, I was alone at my brother's house. And my sister, who had been in the Universal Church for 10 years, came. She had always prayed for me. Always. She had never given up. She never judged me. She was always praying for me, seeking for me to hear the word. But I had always dismissed that. Why? Because I was educated. I had read more than a hundred books. I had several degrees from several places. I had sought out the greatest masters. So I had a big ego, a lot of knowledge. Therefore, I never accepted. However, one day, my sister brought an evangelist to talk to me. She was a simple woman. She tried to talk to me, but I dismissed her. No, I won't talk to you. Don't waste your time. What could you possibly have to teach me, for God's sake? I didn't want to speak to her. However, she insisted. So I said, very well, I'm here distressed, without peace, seeing all kinds of demons. 
Se a senhora fizer para mim, if you pray for me and I have one minute of peace, tiver um minuto de paz, eu vou ver a I will senhora, see you again e digo, and I will convert to your God. What do you say? Ela, with her faith, ela, she came to me with all she had and prayed for me. Neste momento, I listened to her prayer. It was very simple, basic. It was something that anyone could have done. However, she put her faith, probably the energy of God, in the prayer. I felt God in me. I felt something that I never had. Peace. A minute of peace. Tranquility. I felt such a wonderful presence within. And that transformed me. In that very instant, after one minute, I knelt down and told her, Today, I convert to your God. From today, what I used to do for the spirits, I will do for Jesus. That happened on a Friday. On Sunday, I went to church. I spoke to the pastor, got baptized in water, and surrendered with body and soul to God. So, I began. I was focused. Wow, I want more of this God. I want to know more of this God. For three months, I manifested in the church. I felt ashamed. Why? Because I was in the church and was manifesting with demons. I howled, I screamed, I felt ashamed. That ended when the hurt was taken out of me. I had been hurt with everything that happened to me, with the betrayal. I forgave, then I was delivered. From that moment on, I never manifested again. I had peace. But I wanted more. God had sent an angel for that challenge of the minute of peace. I wanted God in me. I wanted the Holy Spirit inside me. So I became revolted. I had received all kinds of spirits, demons, entities. What do I have to do to have God in me? I want to have the Holy Spirit. I became revolted. What did I do? I went with my all into the campaign. I went with everything. I saw the opportunity to have God inside me. I did the campaign to have the Holy Spirit. I really placed my all in. When I heard about the campaign and sacrifice, for me, this was very normal because I had always sacrificed. I must sacrifice on this altar because the altar I used to sacrifice on was the altar of the spirits, the altar of demons. I then thought, now I will sacrifice on the right altar. I went up with everything I had. I did the material sacrifice, but I also surrendered my ego, my pride. I surrendered all my anxieties to God. When I went up on the altar, I just asked for one thing, the Holy Spirit. I said, my God, you may not give me anything else, but I want your spirit inside me. When I came down from the altar, I was a different person. One day, I was in an intelligent meeting, and I was seeking for the Holy Spirit with all my strength. In that moment, I received the assurance I used to seek for so many spirits, so many entities. But in that instant, I thought, nothing compares to this. This assurance, this certainty, this faith, it was indescribable. The Holy Spirit is greater than anything. There is nothing like Him. There is nothing bigger than this. It is peace like no other. It is peace where everything can end, but you are at peace. Today, I am married to a woman of God. She's a woman who honors me in everything, a blessed woman. Today, my children are blessed. I have a job as a coordinator in a multinational company. It's a different company, but it's a good job. I have regained financial stability. Today, I have peace. Today, I have tranquility. Today, I have pleasure with my family. Today, I have exchanged the school of magic for the school of faith. Today, I try to help people find the real God, to find the Lord Jesus. I say to you, the altar owes nothing to no one. Everything I had sacrificed, God has given me back a lot more. Why should I have any doubts if God gives much more than what I place or sow on the altar? I came to the church through a challenge with an evangelist. So I make one with you now. 
You who are out there, you who are like I was, wherever you are, look up to God, kneel before him and make a sincere prayer. I bet that you will have the same peace I had in one minute and even more. Less distraction. More prayer. For something much greater. The Holy Spirit. At the time, the pastor said, embrace the person that is next to you. I don't know who the person was, but all I can remember in that moment was clarity. And that was something that I'd never had in my mind. I never had in my heart. I never had any of that. I never had any sort of clarity. That day I embraced the person that was next to me. I don't remember who they was, but all I know is that moment I received the Holy Spirit. Just a stillness, a calmness, and it wasn't an emotion. There wasn't a crying. There wasn't tears. It was simply the understanding that the Holy Spirit has come upon me. And the reason that the Holy Spirit has come upon me is because I have nothing left to do with this world. All I wanted was Him. So in that moment, to have that happiness, to have that clarity, to have that joy, to genuinely, genuinely feel joy, not, not temporary um, happiness, temporary. No, it was real joy, like it was real happiness. Today, I'm, I'm happy, I, have, I always have a smile on my face. If you say, my God, I want to be like you. I want to be your child. Because children look like their dads. And I want to be like you, my God. But I cannot make myself like you of my own strength, of my own accord. I need your spirit. The fast of Daniel, 21 days before the face of God. At 232 Seven Sisters Road. Finsbury Park, London, N4, 3NX, or at your nearest Universal Church. You know, this gentleman said something very powerful in his testimony, that when he was outside serving the spirits, he understood the concept of sacrifice very well because he sacrificed to them. And this is a law of nature in life. It doesn't matter what you believe in. Sacrifice is a part of life. You just have to choose which altar to sacrifice in. Unfortunately, many people think wrongly that God, as on the opposite of everything else and everyone else in this world, doesn't require sacrifice. In fact, you see that people understand that to conquer the love of their life, it takes sacrifice. To achieve anything, it takes sacrifice. But people think, no, God, God is the odd one out that I can do whatever I want and have whatever results I want. That's not the case. And the purpose of the campaign of Mount Sinai is exactly this, to understand that when I go to the altar to empty myself on the altar, I am following the same concept that Abraham and Moses and Isaac and all the men of God did, including up to the time of the Lord Jesus. But I want to speak to you now about what God said to Moses. Look what happened. Then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. We've read this verse, Moses said to God, Lord, if you don't go with us, if your presence doesn't go with us, then don't take us up from here. And then it says, he said, for how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight, except you go with us? So we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are upon the face of of the earth. When Moses said, if your presence doesn't go with us, don't make us leave this place. He then said, because how will people know that we are, that we found grace in your sight, 
we have to be separate. Moses said, Lord, we have to be separate from all the people of the earth. And that's what the baptism with the Holy Spirit does. The baptism with the Holy Spirit makes you be separate from the whole world, be different from the whole world. We often say that you cannot find a person who is baptized with the Holy Spirit and is depressed and swears, curses, lies, is violent. These things you expect in the life of a person who doesn't have God. But a person with the Holy Spirit, like Moses said here, has to be separate, has to stand out, has to, has to be different from everybody else. Because if you receive the Spirit of God and your behavior, your, your demeanor is the same as the people of the world, then what good is this Holy Spirit? When the Spirit of God comes upon the per a person, there has to be a clear before and after. We saw that in the primitive church, in the disciples. And that happens, that has to happen today. Because maybe you believe in God, you go to the church, but you, you lack, or maybe you don't go to church. You know, maybe you believe in God, but you don't go to church, or maybe you don't believe in God. Maybe you believed one day that you had the Spirit of God, but was there a difference? Because that is that is the main point. We have the Apostle Miguel on the altar. Apostle Miguel, you know, the, the main, actually the Lord Jesus spoke about this. He said, you shall know the tree by its fruit. You know, a, a thousand fig trees, they look the same. But the fruit is what differentiates the tree. And when a person says, I have received the Spirit of God, what makes us know that the person really has the Spirit of God is when the person's character, identity, has been transformed from water to wine. Like Moses said here, if we have found grace in your sight, you know, except you go with us, how shall we be separate? He said, we have to be separate. We have to be different from all the other peoples because your spirit is with us. Good evening, Bishop and viewers. Exactly. Moses knew that the grace of God and what would make them totally different than everybody else was the presence of God within him. And you who are watching us now and you feel like you are suffering because you don't have a husband or suffering because your life is broken, your family is broken. You who got into an addiction because of losses you had. You who link your happiness to having things or adding people into your life. This is a great example that what you are searching for cannot be found on people or things. What you are looking for can only be found in the presence of God. Actually, the reason why you are suffering is not because of the hard past you had. It's because of the absence of the Holy Spirit. Because when the Holy Spirit possesses your body, you are never going to see depression. You are never going to see sadness. You are never going to see the slavery to the problems that are oppressing you right now. So these testimonies in this campaign of Mount Sinai, Bishop, it's a direction for those who have been for so long searching for joy, searching for happiness, and they have been disappointed because they are trying to find this life, this joy in people and things. But this is an example that you can only find this true joy and be different than everybody else when the presence of God is in you. You want to be happy? Focus on the presence of the living God. That's right. And actually, I, I want to speak now to Pastor Elijah from our church there in Tuting. You know, Pastor Elijah, I, I was listening to this testimony. We were talking about being separate, standing out. We have to be different from, you know, the people of the world. And I remembered your testimony because... Before coming to the Lord Jesus, you were, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you were stabbed more than once, arrested several times. But when you received the baptism with the Holy Spirit, 
the change was permanent. You know, the change that happens in a person with the Holy Spirit doesn't last a month or a year. It was a permanent change. Please, if I said your testimony incorrectly, please correct me. Otherwise, you know, I believe that you are a different person permanently now because the Spirit of God is in you. Good evening, Bishop. And exactly, Bishop, it, you said it correctly. My life is completely different because of the Holy Spirit. As you mentioned, I was living a similar life to many people who were around me. And there was no difference between myself and them. Actually, I worked back in Hackney uh, a few years ago, and there were people that I used to hang around with who have seen this clear difference with me, inside of me, because of the Holy Spirit. So much so that they asked how. How was this able to happen? And the Holy Spirit brings this separation. Only the Holy Spirit, and this is the one criteria that God wants or that God requires to live inside of us, a desire for us to be separate from the world. Yeah. And this is what this campaign is for, Bishop. Yeah, and Moses says, says here, so we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. This is very powerful. When you have the Spirit of God, you are separate from all the people of the earth. God makes you his representative here on earth. Imagine that. Imagine you being so transformed as a person that you represent God here on earth. There is no greater glory than that. Let's talk to God right now. Let's talk to God. It's time to pray. My Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus, my Father, I believe that you have given us a revelation here tonight because your word says, you said, actually Moses, inspired by your spirit, said, Lord, we have to be separate from all the people of the earth. And in the same way, those who have your spirit, my Lord, they have to be separate from everything and everybody in this world. A person cannot receive your spirit and be the same and be angry and be empty and be an addict and be the person that they were before. Because if I say that I receive your spirit and I continue being the same, then what good is it that supposed spirit? Surely one of two things are true. If a person says that they received your spirit, but they remain the same, either that is not your spirit, or then, my Lord, then this is not a spirit that we should want. But we can see that those who received the embodiment of your spirit, those who are possessed, my God, by your spirit, they were transformed. Like it happened with this testimony we saw tonight. And like it happened in all the testimonies, in all the lives of those who've had an encounter with the living God. My Father, I determine that in this campaign, we are going to have my Father rising among us, men and women who will serve you forever because they were born of the Spirit of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And I called my wife here just before we end the program because this Saturday at 3 p.m. we have the women's meeting, the Godly Wood self-help meeting. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us can you give us uh, a hint? Please don't say no, because otherwise... No, no, no. I can say something. Tell me. Uh, but not a lot. I I can just say this, but I really mean it. I'm not saying this just so that you can come. If you apply what you're going to learn, you're going to hear a very simple message. If you apply that message to your life, your life is going to change. You will not be the same person. So I think it has a lot to do with what we are hearing lately. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, it's not about the campaign. It's not about the campaign of Israel, but it has to do with you, woman, and how you see yourself. Bishop, what about... Don't be late. Don't be late. 3 p.m. Yeah, because many people arrive late. Sure. And they miss out. Yeah. Bishop, what about fundraising this Saturday? Well, we're going to hand over the fundraising this Saturday only to the men. It's and the morning. women will be there in the church in the morning to evangelize. And then the women's meeting at 3 p.m. It will be a blessing. Don't miss it. I will be there. And I'm sure that God is going to speak to all of us. All right? May God bless you abundantly. We'll see you tomorrow at the same time here on Be Inspired. God bless you. Bye-bye. Okay. From the Rainbow Theatre to the UK and the world, the journey of faith of the campaign of revolt on Mount Sinai.